Hey, how's it going everyone? Uh, just Mr. P getting back to you here. The other day I put together a mallet video as I did the mallet project that our 6th graders normally do here at Moscow Middle School. So to start off, let's go through it. I'm going to start making the mallet head. To make the mallet head, which is going to be 6 inches, I'm going to mark the log that I chose from outside at 6 inches so that I can strip it. When I'm marking the log, it's just got to be a thick, dark mark because it's really hard to see on this type of bark. Sweet, all right, so safety glasses. Always have your safety glasses. Whenever you're working in the Moscow Middle School shop, safety glasses will always be on. Okay, so I'm gonna put this log here in the vise. I put my mark up top so I can see it, and then I grabbed a draw knife. A draw knife has a beveled edge. I point to it in the video. A beveled edge is also on a chisel, which I will point to in the video. Both go down when you're using either tool. With a chisel, the back of the handle is made out of resin. Resin isn't very strong if you hit it with metal. So whenever you use a chisel, always make sure to use a wooden mallet. The wooden mallet I'm using in this video is one that was made here in class. And I'm making a very similar one. So whenever there's a knot or a branch or something on the log, I take the chisel and I cut it off. When you do it, and when you're taking off bigger pieces of branch or knots or whatever, you want to come in sometimes and take off a little bit at a time because if you try to take off too much, you're going to get the chisel stuck or you're going to damage the end of the chisel. So you're going to want to be patient when you do this, when you're cleaning up the log and getting it ready. Be thorough in what you do, be patient, and take your time. It's okay to bounce back and forth like I'm doing in the video, use the draw knife, clean it up, go back to the chisel, work through it again, and then come back with a draw knife. If you notice with the chisel, I'm not hitting it really hard. I'm doing nice little taps, just work the way through. That way if it gets stuck, or if I hit something hard, I can just pull it back out and move around. You'll also notice that when I'm using the chisel and the draw knife, I am working with the grain. I know we haven't put out a video yet on working with the grain, but this means that I'm working with the length of the wood. What I'm doing now is I'm actually cutting against the grain, and that's why I'm using what's called a cross-cut saw. As you notice in the video when I get started, I do a couple pullbacks, a couple draws with the saw, and this allows me to get a nice little groove to get, my, uh, to get the saw moving. When I'm sawing, you'll notice that I'm using the full length of the blade, and I, it's hard to see in the video, but I'm not pushing very hard. These saws are sharp, and they're made to cut well. So you just have to work it back and forth and make sure that you're using all the teeth on the saw so that you're not damaging just one portion of the saw. Be careful at the end because it will want to swing back. So now we're going to move on to sanding. So to reduce the wear and tear of the sanding or of the sanding paper and to get a better handle on it, I fold it into a square, a small square. And that's just folding it into quarters or fourths. So now here I'm also sanding with the grain. The grain when you're sanding the end of the mallet head is in those circles. I'm also sanding off the rough edges that were made when I was using the crosscut saw to get it into size. When I'm sanding, I'm not pushing too hard, I'm just using nice consistent pressure and I'm trying to clean up every piece of the wood. I'm trying to get all those rough edges down, all the rough bumps, grooves, whatever it is, I'm trying to clean it up. So this is my preliminary sanding so I can get a better idea of what I'm working with. What you see now in the video, this is called a plane and specifically this is called a block plane. Planes are used with the grain and they actually create flat surfaces. So while you can see that my mallet head is circular, it's actually a cylinder, what the plane is allowing me to do is to take off the growth that you could see earlier in the sanding. And as I cut it down, I don't sit in one area too much. I'm going to rotate the log in the vise. And this allows me to remove it. What you get is you get nice curled up pieces of wood grain. And now I'm going to go back what I just planed and I'm going to sand it again. I'm going to put it in the vise to sand it for the length of this because it's more comfortable and it's easier to do. And I can also grab a stool and do it because hand sanding takes a really long time. And sometimes doing it the right way means that it's going to take a while to do. Uh, most of this video, especially the sanding, I have sped up very, very quickly because I was doing it for so long. So 
So you'll notice also when I close the vise, I'm not closing the vise really hard. The wood as it dries, it has a tendency to crack as the moisture leaves it. And if you pull on the vise too hard, you can actually damage your mallet head. So I'm just lightly closing the vise um, and tightening it enough that I can sand it well, but not damage the material that I'm working with. Alright, so I'm going to pull it out of the vise. I'm going to grab those ends again. I've sanded it preliminarily. I've planed it. Then I sanded the sides in the vise. And now I'm going to go back to the ends. I'm going to keep working over these for quite a while to try to get a better idea of how much farther I need to go. And I'm also going to start to try to get finer detail in the edges. A good spot to always sand quite a bit is over where those knots or branches that you took off with your chisel were. Those always tend to be pretty rough and can require quite a bit of sanding. Alright, so let's get started on the handle. The handle is going to be, typically you want your handle to be smaller, right, and the diameter or the length end to end than the log you use for your mallet head. So the diameter that I'm going to use for this is about an inch and the what I'm measuring right now is 11 inches because what I'm going to do later is I'm actually going to cut my handle so it fits inside of my mallet head and when it's all said and done I want my mallet handle to be 10 inches so I have to count in for that extra inch to go in the mallet head so what I'm going to do with right now is very similar to what I did for my mallet head I'm going to come in I'm going to take out knots, branches, using my chisel and my draw knife again. This handle actually went really, really well with the draw knife. You can get a really good idea of how well the draw knife can work. This draw knife is pretty sharp, so I'm being very careful when I pull it towards myself not to cut myself or pull it too close. I'm also making sure to rotate my mallet, or yeah, rotate my mallet handle so that I'm not ever pulling to the side or underneath my handle, I'm always pulling from the top where my best grip is and I have the most safety. Again, patience is very important. Coming in, remeasuring, reworking it, making sure that I do it right the first time. It takes patience. This is a good example of being patient with the chisel, coming in over the top with multiple passes so that I don't damage the chisel and I can work over it nice and easily. Alright, so again we're going to remeasure, make a mark, and we're going to move on to getting this thing cut. Because we are cutting it against the grain again, like we did with our mallet handle or mallet head, we're going to use a crosscut saw. Again, I'm going to start with a couple strokes to get a groove set so that I can get on moving forward with the full cut. Like previously, using the full length of the saw blade so that all the teeth are cutting and working is key. Alright, now that we got our mallet handle, we've got our length, We've got it stripped, now it's time to get sanding. The sanding for the mount handle didn't take quite as long as for the mount head because this wood was actually a little bit softer than the mallet head wood was. So I'm going to do the same thing, make sure you get all the edges, get all parts, pieces, clean it up, especially focus those knots. And then I'm going to come back to my mallet head and I'm going to measure out three inches, which is half a six, and I'm going to make a mark for where I'm going to drill a hole to put the mallet handle. Mark it, remeasure it, and then we're going to jump right over to drilling. Alright, so here we are. 
the type of bit I'm using in this electric drill. This is called a one inch Forstner bit. It drills these large holes. I'm going to go about an inch deep in anticipation for that mallet handle, which I'm going to be cutting right now. There we go, got all that cut. And now we're going to go over cleanup real quick. That is called a foxtail broom. You're going to sweep off the table, sweep it onto the floor, sweep off the vise, and then we're going to use our small broom to come in and clean around the table and the tools and put it towards the aisles or spaces of the classroom where we can get it with a large broom. Yep, there's the large broom. Coming in, cleaning up, pushing into a one big pile. Something to note is that the pieces that I got from the mallet project, they're all too large to go in our dust collection system, so I will actually be using a dustpan and a foxtail broom to clean up all of this and put it in a trash can. Alrighty, so now that we're done with that, we've got everything cleaned up, all the tools put away, everything, we're going to grab our mallet handle and our mallet head, and we are going to put them together. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our wood glue, and we're going to take the hole that we put in the mallet head, and we're going to work the wood glue all around the edges of the mallet head, and then we're going to take our mallet handle, put them together, and we're going to twist it and move it back and forth so that we can get that wood glue all the way around the inside of the hole of the mallet handle or mallet head and we can get it around the end of the mallet handle then we're gonna push them together and we're gonna leave them to dry and we are now done with the mallet project thanks for joining me today and I hope that everyone is having a great day